Hello, everybody, and welcome to me futzing around with audio levels. This is the studio that I have been working on the past few days inside of the museum I've been working on for the past few months, I guess, technically. Yeah. Um, this is why I've been busy doing other things and not uploading videos, except for uh, Nerblock and Loot Crate, and I just do those because I want to record them but I also want to open them. Like, I have this really big urge to open them. Like, I said, that's the reason I got them, is because it's a little bit of Christmas every month. Um, and I get really excited to open those things because it's it's the box. It's the unknown, that kind of thing. And I like the unknown to an extent. But uh, anyways, uh, so what I've been doing recently, we've been building a vintage computer museum. So we're talking about early, early, early computers, like personal computers. I'm not talking like big honking mainframes. We actually have a, a guy up north that actually does that, so don't have to worry about that at all. We, mo we mostly focus on personal computers from like the Altair all the way up until much more recent uh, Macintoshes, that kind of thing. Basically, the, the evolution of the personal computer and how it works. Now, um... Why would one go to a museum like that when you could just go online, look at computers, and learn more about them than any museum can ever possibly teach you? Well, ours, ours is slightly different. The idea isn't to just teach you about computers. I mean, yeah, okay, it's a little fascinating to look at a computer and to learn a little bit of information about it, but you can do that on Wikipedia. Hell, you can do that on Wikipedia, hit the random button, and do that about something completely different. So what's the point of coming to a museum? Well, the point of coming to this museum is not to learn about computers, but to experience them. Uh, because, I mean, let's give you an example. The Apple Lisa, the very first uh, computer, the very first personal computer with a graphical user interface, like icons and stuff like we kind of like we know now, but designed differently. It, I could learn about that, and it would be okay, it would be interesting. In fact, I had learned about that. I knew that the Lisa was the very first graphical user interface ever designed, ever, ever produced, I should say. Uh, Xerox, of course, had the first one, but they never actually made it commercially available. Apple did. They were the first ones, and it was the Apple Lisa. Now, I, I already knew that, and I knew that it was the first instance of, like, icons and mouse and double click and that kind of thing but actually sitting down and playing with one myself and experiencing what it was like to work on a computer like that it was a it was a whole new level of education i, I can say at that point because think about it before that computer came out everybody had worked on either just the keyboard or much more commonly paper and pen and that was it. So how do you get these people that have been working with notepads, basically, for years onto a computer? Well, you try to take the idea of the desktop and put it onto, well, as we know it today, the desktop. And that's where the name came from. That's why it's called desktop. That's why it's called notepad and that kind of thing. That's, that's why we know things as they are today. But this was really good at like, uh, bridging the gap between the two because you don't double click on you know, the, the Word document, uh, the Lisa Write program. You don't double click on it. There are, it starts with two icons. Basically, you have the Lisa Write program and then you have the Lisa Write paper stack. I forget what it's exactly called. And you double click on the stack to tear off a page which creates a new page that you can name, and then you double-click on the page to open it in Lisa Write. So it was a brand whole, whole brand new experience for me. It actually took four computer experts a half an hour to figure out how to actually use the bloody thing. We actually had to look it up on the internet how to actually use it, because we couldn't figure it out. We kept double-clicking on the paper, creating new papers, couldn't figure it 
I, don't, I guess we never actually tried double clicking on the paper we created. We just thought something was glitched. And every time we double clicked on the program, it says tear off a page to start. And it's like, wait, what? What are you talking about? So we actually had to look up the user manual for the Apple Lisa and actually figured out how to use the Apple Lisa. It was, it was actually kind of funny. But that is the purpose of this studio, is to create YouTube videos for a brand new channel that I've created, which I will uh, actually advertise for when we actually have content to put up there. But to at least try to explain these things to people all over the world because we know not everybody can actually physically come to the museum so what we're going to try to do we're going to try to put it up online as best we can and explain to people that it doesn't really replace actually being in front of a computer and feeling this and it really doesn't but uh, this is this will be my educational style where I try to explain everything as clearly and as in much detail as physically possible for me anyways and uh, but it's gonna be a lot more effort put into it everything could be a lot more in the professional style I should say because this is gonna be produced by me so it's not gonna be professional in any sense of the word but I'm going to attempt to. I'm going to try a lot harder with those videos than I do with these videos, which I pretty much just sit down in front of the computer and do. Because my videos I do for fun, those I'm going to do more for, you know, work. So, I don't know. We'll see how that turns out. But I'm going to end this video here, uh, as this video is mostly just audio testing and seeing, you know, acoustic settings and if there are new acoustic foam here will help in any sense of the word. And uh, so I'm going to see how this turns out, and I will see or I will see you guys in the next episode. I'm getting thrown off my game here. And as always, keep playing the game and have fun.